Max, talk to me about the tech evolution. Talk to me about how we go uh, from the current method of generation, which by and large, and certainly in Africa, is coal-powered. In some parts of the world, nuclear, we're seeing more renewables elsewhere in the world, particularly in your region. Uh, but as we move then to hydrogen, just give me a, a paint a picture for me, please, as to how this evolution happens. Well, looking at the at the one side, I think one part of the or one major step that we need to take to come closer to decarbonization scenarios is really do, first of all, the coal to gas shift because that is somehow significantly already reducing the emissions uh, of the existing fleet. When we just then look at the, the the storage part itself, I think right now, as already being said, there is a significant potential here for the application of, of batteries. And then, you know, towards the way of, uh, or within the way of uh, going to an hydrogen uh, future, there's a, let's say, a battle in between. Yeah. So we see that their cost of batteries are decreasing, helping also building um, bigger storage, um, storage sizes, um, helping the overall business case of the application um, of batteries. But on the other hand, there is also very good potential, as I said, for other technologies, either it's thermal based, it's it's compressed air, it's liquefied air. There's a variety of, of different technologies emerging, and um, they always have the 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 very good opportunity of uh, economy to scale. That means um, looking at the sizes of those projects. Um, the, in the most of the cases, you get a benefit of building it just bigger, um, and um, that is um, somehow. Um, a bit um, the challenge here I see for batteries looking at fuel cells and modularization. I think that is a major step to, to achieve the cost down curve. But once you, you are seeking for higher amounts of energy, also for a longer term duration, there are really those different technologies. And I think um, some of the technologies are also somehow capable to really have a, um, yeah, a sector coupling potential. So we're talking about the the, the thermal energy storage, besides the potential for re-electrification, it could be also the usage of that heat that is stored within the storage itself um, to be used in any industrial process where, where heat is, is required. Um, thinking about also the mining processes. Um, I think what we also will see in future is really the, the multi-usage of energy. Yeah, that means you have the you need the flexibility to decide. Okay, right now I would like to produce more electricity, or I want to use the heat elsewhere. But it's it's really using each part of the energy, and therefore make it also, um, yeah, addressing um, ad addressing the needs uh, really properly, um, and uh, make it therefore very efficient. I think that is one one big um, um, challenge and also a big opportunity looking into this sector coupling topic um, is really helpful. Max, thank you. Um, let's go to you and maybe to wrap up uh, this afternoon, Bavtik. Uh, Bavtik Valabji, he is in London. He uh, is with APSA. And 20 years from now, it's the year 2040. It's November 2040. There'll be no more pandemics. There'll be no more nasty shocks. Um, the world is getting on. Everybody's playing nice. What does South Africa, perhaps Africa's energy mix look like, Bavtik? I'm going to ask the question to all three of you and then wrap up. Thanks, Bruce. Well, I see uh, the, the future of energy is really bright from a renewable energy perspective. I think, uh, you know, 2040 uh, seems like a long way, but it actually isn't uh, at the rate uh, battery technology has been evolving. You know, we've been talking a lot about sort of green hydrogen fuel cells, you know, I think that is certainly going to become a more dominant part of our energy mix. The cost uh, has been evolving uh, immensely over the last few years. There's been a lot of money being plowed into R&D on battery and energy storage. Um, so I think that coupled with tapping nature's natural resources that are afforded to us, uh, you know, and, and we have an abundance of, of brilliant uh, solar radiation in South Africa amongst the highest in the world. So I think solar can be a huge potential wind right so in south africa at the moment we still have um only onshore wind not offshore wind if you look at europe uh you know there, there's a lot of offshore wind uh, generation occurring so i think 
uh, in time, I think you will find that our landscape on the energy will actually move almost completely, well, not completely, but to a large extent away from coal. It will be gas uh, that will be augmenting uh, or supplementing variable renewable energy. Wind, solar, energy storage will be a big dominant part and uh, the storage element uh, will actually uh, enable renewables to be dispatched as and when needed. So I think it's, it's, it really makes for a green future going forward. Ted Blom, give us your perspective, please. The year 2040, what does it look like? Other than we, neither of us can focus really anymore and we can't really pay attention anymore because we've got a bit old for this, but uh, give me a perspective. Okay, so yes, I'm currently busy doing a health reset and I hope to be around in 2040. Previously, I thought I'd be gone by 2030. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. The fact of the matter is, if I look forward, uh, we're certainly going to see uh, uh, electricity commoditized because the what it means of generating and the demands on different types of electricity input are going to be so drastically different uh, that uh, you, you'll be able to store more than adequate power on, on your residential site, especially if you're part of a microgrid. And the only industries that might still uh, really be suffering from uh, the malaise of a uh, formal energy sector are the heavy users, the smelters and the mines and so on, if they hadn't they haven't disinvested by, by 2040. So yes, uh, in 2040 uh, and after that, uh, certainly uh, the terrain will be very, very different. And uh, hopefully we'll all be in a very prosperous position because uh, Certainly, uh, the market is going to open up. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry will have access to very, very cheap power. And that was what power was supposed to be in, in this part of the world until the policy of Eskom was changed. And uh, I think we all can look forward to a very prosperous future. Uh, I certainly am. Uh, that's how I started off by asking Max whether he was licking his lips in anticipation of the opportunity. Uh, final thoughts on this topic to you, Max. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. I, I could not agree more with uh, what has been said. Um, I, I think really the future is there, um, looking at renewables uh, and the application of storage into that, because that is giving us the security that we can ensure really energy supply 24-7 out of renewable power and then adding up uh, wherever it's required um, by by some, some gas-fired um, station will also help us, you know, keeping a, a clean and friendly environment here. Um, I think that those are really the steps that need to be taken. And then for sure, there there needs to be a backup on the regulation side to, to really empower also the application of storage into the systems. And really look at, uh, I think that was Buff Dick, what Buffett said also, look at the, the potential that are just given by nature, by the geolo uh, ge geographic, geographical um, um, advantages, um, also looking at offshore wind power, um, as, as we know, this is a, this is much cheaper, um, than the onshore, uh, wind power and really use those potentials that are given, um, and, uh, set it up by the right foundation from, from the politics side. And, uh, I think then, um, 2040, um, is, looks like a very good future.